You're listening to the After The Show Movie Podcast from ascully.com. Your weekly look at movies, video games, and more brought to you by your hosts, A. Scully and Sid Talk. We're addicted to movies. Are you? Welcome, Sid Talk. Hello. Welcome to After The Show. Hello. Hello. I feel really organized today. <laughs> uh, is this, this isn't part of the before the after the show discussion. That was... Some other stuff about this movie, the heater, the thing, and some other stuff. It wasn't that fascinating. It was quite varied. So tell us more about this organization thing. Well, I made a cool layout for when we do a podcast on my screen with all mm-hmm. the items I need, like my my show notes, an IMDb page, my recording software. It's very good. I feel organized. <laughs> I used to just have it all slapdash everywhere. But no. Let me see. What number is this? Number 766. And now you find. <laughs> I figured out podcasting. <laughs> right on. <laughs> it took me a long time, but now I've figured it out. All right. So it is Saturday, December the 10th. This is after the show. We're a movie review podcast. And this week on episode 766, we're looking at the movie Smile. It's a 2022 movie out on Blu-ray 4K now, rated R from our friends at Paramount. Sid Talk, give us a synopsis of Smile. To clarify, did you say September 10th or December 10th? I said December. Okay, it is December. Well, when we're doing this. Synopsis. Humans dealing with trauma, but trauma as an actual evil entity. All right, I'll give you the one off the box. After witnessing a bizarre traumatic incident involving a patient, Dr. Rose Cotter starts experiencing frightening occurrences that she can't quite explain. Rose must confront her troubled past in order to survive and escape her horrifying new reality. That's long. It is. I mean, I'm not a TikTok generation person, but that's a long description. Even I was (laughs) bored saying it. (laughs) Directed by Parker Flynn, Finn, his first movie. This is based on a short movie and Sid Talk. A short movie that this person made? Yes. Okay. He showed it at a film festival, Paramount took notice, and then he got to make a longer version of that concept. So we've seen that happen before with other movies. Lights Out is one I can think of right off the bat. Mm -hmm. So Sid, what did you think of Smile? I liked it because I feel like it's well made. I enjoyed the whole of it. I really liked the main woman. She was really good. I liked her. It's just that it sort of did that thing where it sort of trickles off. A little bit, right? The resolution isn't as interesting as the premise. Yes. I mean, though I understand. So here's the premise. Well, what did you think? We'll ask you. I'll be polite and ask you. What did you think? I'm less kind. I didn't like it very much. Oh. You know what I did like? The filmmaking. I thought it was expertly. Exactly. Filmed, technically good. The sound, everything was very good. But I found it to be very cookie cutter and almost cliche of a lot of other things. A little bit cliche, but I mean, it's... It it lost me completely when she woke up twice from a dream. When did... So you said that, and then I'm like, when did she wake up twice from a dream? You mean two different times? Two different times. Yeah, two times in one movie is too many for me. Okay, but then the premise is that she, when she goes to sleep, she's having these terrible nightmares. And so I felt like that was excusable. Not for me. (laughs) Damn. I I punish it severely for that. (laughs) Well, here's the premise. So she, she, you said before, she's a psychiatrist or mental health person. She works in a hospital and she works in the emergency psychiatric ward. So people come there. So this woman comes, the woman's like, something is following me and I see it and it's terrifying. And he has this weird smile on his face. And then this woman traumatically kills herself right in front of this doctor. And then our doctor starts to see the weird smiling face on different people and hallucinating and whatnot. And the idea is that this thing is trauma. The existence, like a malevolent existence of trauma. That when you are, you experience something traumatic, that this thing attaches to you. And somehow 
they don't ever explain it, but like the idea, I guess, is it's it's escalated to where you have to either kill yourself in front of someone to make them traumatized. Yes. And then it passes on to them because they're they now have seen traumatic events or you have to kill someone else in front of a third party in order for this thing to say. OK, so it's a little bit flimsy on that. I don't mind the contrived also. Kind of, but I don't mind. I mean, it's a real thing, trauma. And it's the premise, the idea of it is we all experience multiple traumas in our life and then we turn them into other things like either self-harm or self-medication or harming other people or lashing out at other people, completely ignoring it, but it's going to come out like a pressure cooker, right? Trauma starts the pressure inside your pressure cooker of your mind, which I did like near the end. She says, he says, I mean, your mind, you can't get rid of me. And she says, but it's my mind. So you can never escape. You know, it's like, to me, that was the most truth of the whole movie, that this movie can't give you a happy ending. Does that remind Spoiler you of alert. A Nightmare on Elm Street? She's, Not really. Nancy says, this is my my mind. And, you, you know, when he's trying to torment her, she... I mean, I didn't think of that. She Not turns really. it around. But the, but the thing is, I understand that it's based in reality. True. She didn't really turn it around, if you think about the end. She no. She didn't. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't pleasant. So... More trauma, you know, <laughs> for everybody. <laughs> and I was thinking while we're watching it, I understand terrible things happen, bad things happen, either by people doing them or nature or whatever. Yes. So then we watch horror movies, where in the horror movie we see people do terrible things, like in this movie, slitting their throat or seeing where someone has hammered themselves to death. Hammer, not like drinking. A mother committing suicide by taking too many pills. Now, we know in the front of our brain that that's fake, right? I, I mean, I'm not a person who lives the reality of the movie. I'm not sitting there accepting it as reality. I am always aware it's an actor, it's a performer, it's a set, it's a special effect, right? Yeah. But does the primal part of my brain know that? Because I'm looking at an image of what is representational of a human, which is my species in the natural world, and I'm seeing trauma done to them, violent trauma, and my primal brain somewhere must be going like, holy crap, <laughs> like, <laughs> how how are you surviving this? But for some reason, it's very separate, right? Well, for me anyway. So I was just thinking about that while we we're watching it. You know, our interpretation of trauma as well isn't really addressed in this movie at all. They kind of attach the idea of trauma very flimsily, I think is probably why you were a little bit irritated or not in, entertained fully. One of the things, it must be to do with trauma, my trauma that's made me like this. <laughs> but there are two scenes in the movie that made me laugh. Like I actually laughed and they were supposed to be like terribly horrible. I don't recall you laughing. Well, I was laughing inside. Okay. It didn't come out. So. <laughs> You're well contained. Yeah. Number one was a child opening a present. I don't know why I found it funny, but it was very funny. It was funny because it looked, <laughs> they did a CGI cat and it was very there was bad. a dead cat in a box that looked like uh, a really awesome stuffed toy cat it wasn't good i i don't blame you for laughing at so that. i laughed at that and another scene was where the president's uh guy from designated survivor yes. cal pen rips his own face off yeah that just looked stupid did it remind you of Beetlejuice when they opened the It did. It rem- up? <laughs> anything like that. Or Meet the Feebles by uh, Peter Jackson. Like, it just looks stupid. And I was like, am I supposed to be horrified or just laughing at this part? I get you. So that the, you're already not 100% in. No, right? I think uh, it had lost me a bit. Yeah. But at that point. I actually found the opening pretty effective. Yes, I agree. Up to the title card. When it says smile. And then, and then, and I said to you, the end that was pretty good because that seems like a that's a contain that's like the short film that we watched. It was well contained, yes, yeah. But then it kind of goes down the road. I don't know. Me, I liked meeting her at the beginning, and she slowly starts to unwind because she's fine at the beginning, right? Yeah, and she's really good. I really like. I thought she woman. was good at being one person at the beginning of the movie and a totally different person at the end. Correct, and it's not over the top or like cartoony or two-dimensional it's quite good actually and the filmmaking was even those upside down shots which are stylish but they seem to fit well here Mm -hmm. 
everything looks really good. Like it, there's no like wonky, cheap looking shots. Everything's well set up. The lighting's good. The sound's good. There's never a moment where I'm like, I can't really tell what's happening because it's too dark and grimy. That's there's a good some, point. There's some dark scenes and yet it looks great. Yeah. I mean, there's a creature, let me say, at the end, which was a bit weird and I didn't really like it that much. Is it that guy who played the one thing in that other movie? In The Conjuring, maybe. The big guy. That one. And then there was another one. It too. felt like it to me. When it's a fully CGI creature, mm-hmm. let's say, that looked really bad. Was he fully CGI? Oh, you mean it the from the bit. side? Yeah. 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 I, I was like, like I could have done without that even. It didn't need to go that far, I don't think. I got you. In fact, the last, I would say, 15 minutes, it kind of goes in this other direction and it's a bit... It goes in the direction where, and I'm doing a spoiler here, but trauma in the world has no happy ending. Mm-hmm. We will. Know, I mean, you can resolve and cope and and confront and cope in this inside of your own brain in your life as best you can through to the end of your life with whatever traumas you have been dealt or dealt to yourself, right? But that's not a happy ending because no. it never goes away. And by heavy handedly pushing that at us, I felt like that was like a little bit ugh, uncomfortable of an ending. Like I was like, no. Don't resort to this, right? There's other ways. Yeah. Than her going ahead and passing this trauma on to someone else. Like, okay, so all of this was for nothing, essentially. Which was kind of a disappointment there at the end. Yeah, that's pretty much. Was there anything that I did love? Let me see. Not really. I mean, she's good, though. I have to keep emphasizing. I think she's good. I would love to see her in other things. Don't think everybody's good in this, though. I think there's also some sloppy dialogue. Oh, yes. Sloppy dialogue. Especially from the uh, the Dr. Madeline lady. Yes. It sounded like she was in a different movie. But let's remind ourselves that at least one of those scenes wasn't her. So right. you have to remember that. Yeah, that's not the sometimes scene I'm referring the, to. Yeah, though. sometimes the person we're talking to isn't the person because, as we established very early on... This thing can come to you as a hallucination and hallucination as a hallucination, whichever grammar is correct in the form of another person. But it always reveals itself to you as being not the person you think you're looking at. So we have that going on. So I think any of those times you might have to kind of, you know. Now, another thing I kind of missed in this movie, I wished it would have gone this route. I'll make make the movie myself. Okay. Okay. Very good. Was... Anybody else um, in this case, this smile thing, we don't get to ever see it. We just see like photographs of crime scenes. And I didn't think they effectively conveyed like the gruesomeness of stuff. Oh, yeah, we didn't. I I mean, it's been going on. We we don't know the very origins of it, but we've in this movie, they track like 20 different. We see photos. Yeah. And 20 different cases that her cop ex-boyfriend, you know, very conveniently looks up that. When you see a person, like she saw somebody do suicide and before that they saw someone commit suicide and they saw someone commit suicide. So he's traced that back to 20 people at least, you know, in this chain. Yep. So we have that sort of side investigation going on to get like to the heart of it, but never do. I wanted to actually, I was like, this movie is going to show us some of these cool other people. I thought it was going to cut at some point to somebody else and then we'd get to see this thing happen. Like, but we don't get to see it happen. We get to see photographs. We see one little video of somebody killing themselves. You know what that reminded me of? You know what it reminded me of? And we're going to say the same thing. M. Night Shyamalan yes. Ding Dong signs. Yeah, no. No, not signs. The other one with a Marky Mark. The happening. The happening. <laughs> yes. Totally. Like the zoo animals tearing somebody's arm off. Yeah. Yeah, it looked... Yeah. I didn't hate that movie, by the way. I'm going to go on the record as much as everyone else. Just saying. <laughs> But in this movie, when it showed us, I was like, please let me see some of these other smile killing uh, suicides. And then we like cut to this video and I was like, oh, cool. And then the video happened. I was like, wow, that looks so janky. And why did you want to see more? I guess I'm not. Because it's a horror movie. I'm wanting to see. Oh, I'm wanting to like explore the we see one at the beginning and then we don't see any others. Right. I mean, right. I guess I felt satisfied in the. Crime photos that we get a glimpse of and then seeing that video 
and understanding what's going on. I think if we'd seen multiples, that would have seemed a little try hard as well. That would have been like a, a Freddy movie, right? Where you're just seeing a bunch of people. I'd like to see at least one more, let's say. <laughs> because, like, I'm in it for the horror, right? I've come for a horror film. And yes, I can see some gross pictures or videos. And the only film I think that really does that effectively is Seven, where they can just mention something and it really disturbs you. True. They don't even have to show you anything. But in this, I was like, no, I need to see something, not just the little board of pictures. Again, I think this is because, and we all, we experience it. I experience it rarely, but from time to time, a movie does not capture me at all. And so all I'm doing is trying to fill in the gaps. I definitely felt the, uh, I'm checking out of this movie. um, I actually enjoyed it more than you then. I I mean, I, I actually enjoy and I, because I'm behind the concept and, but it's not a new concept in horror movies because we have, what's it called? Fallen where, you know, he whistles, John Goodman whistles and Denzel Washington, I think is in it. And you whistle the thing. Yeah. I it's like that. an evil spirit. I forget who it is. Azazel or somebody like that gets attached to you and then you do terrible things and then it just passes on. It's like a jokester. It likes to see people suffer. And it thrives on every new person suffering, right? So that's not a new concept. And I think there's been many others who do kind of the same thing. But And like the happening, it was just sort of like it waves across people. And so yeah. I didn't dislike it. So it's very interesting that you uh, you were kind of checked out. Yeah. It, and it also, on the other side of everything, I did. I wasn't once scared or terrified or even the jump scares didn't get me. I got a couple. Yeah. I'll be honest. Yeah, a couple. couple. They did a, like maybe three jump scares in this movie. They were basically loud noises and somebody jumping out, right? And you were already saying like when the cat came to the door the first time you said, oh, don't kill the cat. Yeah, I was I was definitely, <laughs> as soon as the cat, the cutest cat just came to the door and looked at her, I was like, yep, you're dead cat. <laughs> I've seen enough movies. <laughs> <laughs> You're doomed. Run, run away. And unfortunately, the the cat death package scene was the uh, just comedy for me. It was. I mean, it wasn't comedy for me. It was just like not impactful. Also, uh, let's get on to the cast. Well, let me go back to one more point. Okay, so they saw the child who opened the dead cat box and then seeing his aunt in the car freaking out like screaming. And it shows him being he's traumatized now. He doesn't probably doesn't know why. And I thought, oh, God, now we're going to have a case, a scene where the child, no matter what she does, it's already passed on to this child. I thought that, too. But that never happened. And then we go to a jail where one guy has survived it because he killed someone else to pass it on. And then he freaks out. And I thought, okay, we're going to go back to his jail cell and see him. But we never did that either. (laughs) There's a lot of not doing stuff. Yeah. Not Not seeing the things happen. And... Like plot strands that just stop. I think we're supposed to just understand the overriding idea is that we're all doomed to live with our own trauma and pass it on to others. That is that is actually the message of the movie. If trauma you think about it. is the new COVID. Oh my god. <laughs> That's not new, but I'm like, don't make jokes like that. Inappropriate. Oh well, my god. Somebody has to. No, we don't cut that out. Okay. All right. Cast, uh, Sosie Bacon plays Rose Cotter. She is uh, Kevin Bacon's daughter. Didn't know until I looked her up on the thing. What do you think of her? I liked her. I have stated clearly that I did like her. She's my favorite thing in the movie. She slowly did the I'm a normal person and now I'm a really traumatized person. Correct. It's very slow the way she got to it. I really liked it. We also didn't integrate correctly that when she was a young girl, 10 years old. Yes, her mother committed suicide, not in front of her, but she, you know, the mother had taken pills. The daughter sees her suffering and then doesn't doesn't get help or whatever. So there's that. Right. So why didn't that? Why doesn't she have like that guy in her head because of that? I do not know. So we've attached that trauma. Just look at it's different. It's like a generic. Oh, yeah, that was really traumatic. But you didn't end up with any of this shit going on because of it. Like yeah. that, I was a little bit like, aren't we going to integrate this and be like, see, I've been here the whole time. I've see, been in you the whole time and you just didn't know it. But no, I'm writing the movie again for them. Like, you So can. now you're picking it apart. I am. 
Jesse T. Usher plays Trevor. Is the A Train from The Boys? What do you think of the A Train? Uh, he's a bit shallow, but I think that's how that character was supposed to be. So I was like, also, he just disappeared out of the movie. Like, well, he called her old therapist, and she wasn't happy. And then, yeah. before you know it, he's moved out. So I accepted the, his absence. Kyle Gallner plays Joel. So this is a convenience of the of a horror movie or a movie that her ex is a, is a policeman. So at some point she might need a policeman to look up something or something. And that's what happens here, right? Correct. What do you think of Kyle though? That was good. I mean, I, he's the, the two of them are the most grounded performances. I felt like Cal Penn is Dr. Morgan. Cal Penn is the, uh, Designated, designated survivor, survivor bloke. I mean, he's fine. He's just the concerned administrator at the hospital. He's also her friend and kind of shows up to be like, you're acting really not well, so you have to take a week off. <laughs> That's when, kind of it. <laughs> and the scene where he rips his face off in a horror style is like reanimator or one of those old like schlocky. Kind of, yeah. Like it didn't really fit in the movie, I didn't think. It just looked silly and it was I hear you. Um, mental. <laughs> We've also got Robin Wiegert as Dr. Madeline Northcott. I didn't really like her at all. I think that, I mean, I don't know, I wasn't in this woman's mind, but the idea that she knew that at some point she wasn't going to be her character, yeah. right? So that yeah. kind of informed this sort of detached weirdness. And also, because our main character, she does go to her. This is her ex-therapist, right? So our main character is a therapist, and she goes to her old therapist. But there's some tension there. Like, the therapist's like, I do think you should start coming back. And she's like, mm, you know, like, not really. And then she's pissed off yeah. at the therapist for being, coming around, and then coming around again, which wasn't really her. But I feel like we have no explanation for why. The, <laughs> we have no little, like, not even one sentence No, that's about, true. like, well, you lied to me and I don't trust you or you held back my application to get my job at my hospital, whatever. Like there was nothing, but their scenes were built on a weird tension of something that we didn't know about. That is true. Directed by Parker Finn. He's just directed this short movie. What do you think? You know what? I liked his directing mm -hmm. and the cinematographer was great. Technically, it is a very good film. It's just flimsy for me the story very similar to last week when you think about it yes technically loved looking at it but then it had you know you know that's true so imdb reviews what are those those are reviews on imdb and some of them are one star and you like to read them because they're hilarious all right so here's number one one star guy he says really amateur directing and terrible acting certainly don't recommend this film any review that gives it more than one star is overrated the opening 15 minutes are just comical. So disappointed. Well, I mean, that's one of the most concise ones you've ever read. Next one says, stupid as hell. Oh, my. The movie was just a compilation of other horror movies. Nothing original about it. A couple of jump stairs and, uh, scares and a predictable ending with no backstory on how it got started. I liked how they started the movie like it was an original horror flick. But again, it became nothing. I mean, you would agree with that. I would. <laughs> Finally, this one says, Another dumb, no-substance, scary movie. A movie that scares you with loud sounds and pop-up ghosts. Storyline is boring, and the only scary part is the loud sounds. I'm <laughs> typing this review while watching this dumb movie in the theatre. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Rude. Yeah. I don't mean the words. I mean rude. That's actually the second week in a row that somebody's been writing their IMDb review in the theatre. You are correct. So that must be becoming Ew, a new thing. I don't like people. Next people will be making the TikTok review video just <laughs> yeah. in the theatre while the movie's <laughs> on. Like. <laughs> this is why we don't go to the theatre anymore. Exactly. We, we Sad have a, but true. That's it for our IMDb reviews. Let's give this movie a score. So I'm going to give Smile a 5 out of 10. Ooh, 5. But that's average. You don't sound like you feel like it's average. I feel like I have to give it more than 4 because it looked and sounded so good. Okay, so you feel pressured. Yeah. Got it. I'm going to give it a 7 because wow. I enjoyed it. Wow. I just feel like <laughs> it, <laughs> it... I love the concept. 
all of that. Well, that's it. Don't try to talk me out of it. I mean, it's not going to make the top 10 movies of the year. I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, I've not looked at them all yet. I like to go and look at them in a couple of weeks. And, uh, you know, and we also do our worst movie of the year. And for me, I'm, I'm sure there's something worse than this one for me. Somewhere. There has to be. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Yeah. Don't make me look at my spreadsheet in the middle so, of the pub. I'll have a look at that in a couple of weeks. <laughs> so thank you for Paramount for sending us a disc. Next week, we're looking at Ticket to Paradise with Julia Roberts. Do you know Julia Roberts? I've heard of her. Well, she's back. Take it to paradise. Is that a song? Am I thinking of something else? I remember paradise. <laughs> yeah, you, that, that's something. <laughs> Somebody knows. Uh, so movie recommendations. I'm going with a horror movie that this one kind of reminded me of, but this one is much better, and it's called It Follows. It did remind me of that too, yes. Yeah, but oh, I, 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 I absolutely love It Follows. You did. And the concept of that is good, something following you. It is, but that one's fully unexplained. Right. Except um, through the context of the movie, you get some like understanding of it. But And my worry. other one is the TV show The Boys, which Jesse T. Usher from this movie is in. And The Boys is just, is a very unique TV show, let me tell you. A unique, yes. Yes. Very, very good. I love it. Do not watch it if you are, well, if you like being offended because you're going to be. Mm -hmm. by something at some point yeah it's pretty much touches so have, everything doesn't you it? have to accept it i mean not understand to me it's art and so it exists and if i didn't like it i wouldn't watch it but yeah it can it can be prickly at times and homelander is just one of my favorite characters <laughs> he's terrible he's actually terrible but the guy who plays him is just so committed to playing that guy it's so good every time i watch him it is good and, your and my recommendations are come from the 90s. We're up into 1997, I think. I've lost track. I'm just going to give you five of all the movies I've ever seen that I remember that I've seen and that I'm making a list of. So we have Contact. Very good. I loved it at the time, but I don't know if it holds up. No, it's good. Air Force One, I'm pretty sure doesn't hold up. Meh. Yeah. Conspiracy Theory, which would be Mel Gibson. And I don't think that holds up. Speaking of Julia Roberts. Oh, yeah. Copland. Oh, Copland I really like, yes. Do you, again, does it hold up? I don't know. I haven't seen it for a long time. And The Full Monty was just as a charming little British flick. Yeah, I've never really been into The Full Monty, but I can understand its appeal. It's like the British Magic Mike. Or Calendar Girls. Yes. Calendar Girls is, yeah. Yeah, very similar. All right, Ace Scully stuff. I've been playing a new game this week, Need for Speed Unbound. It's the latest Need for Speed game, racing game. They've given it this, like... Uh, and they've never done this before, but it's like anime meets street racing. It's a weird combination because the characters in the game are all anime characters. And some of the special effects on the cars are also anime inspired, like the smoke coming off the tires. Or when you jump a jump in the car, your car like gets wings, but they're like anime wings. And the nearest thing I can say that it's like is Into the Spider-Verse, the cartoon very stylized they don't take it like 100 percent with this style because the actual game is very photo realistic it's just the things in the world have this cool hip-hop slash you know graffiti style to them i quite like it i've seen people say that it ruins the whole game for them because they don't want that style in there they just want it to look real well i can tell you this from listening to it and then watching it for a couple of minutes at a time uh i wasn't into it well, I mean, it's a racing game. I know, right? but then the talking and then breaking into your racing constantly. And it was just like, ew, it's super distracting. And, and there is a lot of talking. Like, Yeah, I thought it was really... Dis I mean, I like watching you play Gran Turismo. You're just racing and it just looks gorgeous. And that's it. There's some cool music. I can get zen with that shit. But this was like, ew. I mean, it's very um, like car culture based. So it's a lot of rap, hip hop. I don't mind the music. I don't like the talking. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can turn the talking off if you don't like it, to be fair. But I leave it on because I'm following the story, you know? I mean, it's fine that you like it. I mean, it can't help it if you're wrong. <laughs> and it's a racing game with a story, which is like you've got to get your way up the ranks of this racing, underground racing league to get to the top. It's not really a very complicated story, but it's more of a story than they've done for quite some time. Most racing games don't have a story at all. I'm quite enjoying it. 
I do find it extremely difficult. And I'm playing it on medium, just the normal difficulty. And to come first, I think I've done it once. And I've played, what, eight, nine hours of it, maybe? A lot, yeah. I'm assuming that when you get better cars later in the game, it'll be easier to come first. But you better not like coming first because it's not going to happen at the beginning for you because you get this really trashy little car. Everybody else's cars seem twice as fast as yours. And it's very lucky if you manage to get past them all. So Why does anyone want a hard game? I find this very fascinating. My friend Jamin, rest in peace. Yes. He um, loved whatever game it was. If it said extreme difficulty, that's the difficulty he's playing it on. Like, even if it, like, ruins his life. Like, because he, he I don't know, he just I liked mean, that the was challenge. True. That was true. He was very committed. He'd be like, okay, I'm doing this on extreme difficulty. It might take me um, 500 hours, but I'm going to sit down and do it. So, mm. yeah, there are those type of people. So Need for Speed Underground, I'm playing it on the PS5. It's out on all the platforms. Uh, it's a fun racing game if you like racing. Sid taught what's for dinner. Well, we found some... What's it called? Squash slash pumpkin ravioli at Aldi. This we, yeah, we mentioned it. Yeah. yeah, it's not an advertisement, but it was really good. So we're having that. I'm going to make some mushroom sauce. We're the world's first podcast to be sponsored by Aldi. <laughs> <laughs> Are we? I wish. Holy <laughs> shit. If Aldi wanted to give me some free groceries. I'd be, I'm all in. I'm not sure Aldi sponsor movie podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit of a disconnect there. Um, so we're having that pasta with mushroom sauce and some veg, and uh, that is all. And what's your advice? My advice isn't advice, this is an observation, which we all love. Ooh. Everyone's favorite. I get tons of feedback, not true, about, <laughs> I get zero <laughs> feedback. <laughs> Either you don't ever get any feedback on my advice, or there isn't any. So. I don't get any, no, nobody right. cares. Right. It's so valuable that it's so precious. No one even wants to comment. Maybe I've broken the internet. The one thing that no one will comment on. I love it. Here's my observation. I listen to a lot of old timey radio, you know, from the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, when radio was old timey coming up when it was a child and then it, it matured and then it went away, right? For the old timey talkie radio. And then I've seen a lot of movies. I haven't read a lot of books. I will admit this up front. So anyone who wants to judge me for that, that is fine. But I have experienced many stories in my life, let me say that way. And what I've observed, I have concatted much information from my study here, that when a man or a male person is the villain or the bad guy, right? Yes. That they're just bad. They're bad because they're greedy. They're bad because they're violent. They're bad because they want power. They're just bad. They're just bad. That's it. Like the genericness of their badness needs to be defeated because the world is at threat because of this badness. When a woman is a villain or the bad guy or a character that is anti-hero or whatever, everything that's pointed out almost about her that is bad is very pointedly because she is a woman. That's that, true. And attached to that, people, well, in lots of stories and lots of, I mean, this is all fiction we're talking about, so I'm, I know this isn't reality, but these are people's perception and telling stories of these that, well, she's emotional, right? She's a scorned woman. Or she's distraught because she lost her children or because she never had children or because her children were taken away. So she's angry because she's a woman. She's pissed off because something female related. She's been scorned. She was cheated on. Whatever, right? And all that goes back to being overly emotional. What the fuck is revenge and anger if those aren't emotions, right? So if a man... Either the hero or the anti-hero or the uh, villain are reacting with vengeance. I will avenge my dead wife and child. That's an emotion. I hate to break it to you. I will defend my fallen country because you destroyed my country and I'm pissed off. Well, you're pissed off, <laughs> right? That's an emotion. Then it's still, it's generic. It's not, you're not mad because you're a man. You're not getting vengeance because you're a man. But if she's doing it, it's because she's a woman. And I've just, I've, I realize it's not 100%. So if this is the one bit of advice slash observation that I've ever made that gets any feedback and someone's going to whine and bitch and moan about it, like, 
Oh, you're a man hater. I am not. I clearly am not because I love that man sitting over there. Hey, thanks. <laughs> I love individual men. I love mankind and womankind. I love humanity. I don't like people, but I like humanity. But it is an observation about the storytelling that we have done. And I'm sure it's not just in our society. I'm from America. And I'm mostly listening to American or European or Canadian stories, right? Very similar. So, you know, it's just one of those things. If you never observe it and you don't give a shit, that's cool. Just go on about your business. If you all of a sudden go, oh, wow, holy crap. Like, the hero of this story can't just be a hero because she wants to, like, save the world. She has to be a hero because of something female-related. Now, I'm not opposed to that, but I want it to be both ways. So, that is it. That is all. Well done. Ascully.com is the site you can go to to get this podcast. We're also on anchor.fm slash after the show, Spotify, iTunes, anywhere you can get podcasts. We're on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. A Scully is me and Sid Talk is you. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> email feedback to a Scully, a Scully dot com. Do not email Sid Talk at whatever dot com she is. <laughs> and finally, stay classy and smile. Oh my. What I'm going to say, think for yourself or someone will do it for you. <laughs> <laughs>